Call the meeting to order the Whaley Select Board on December 9th, 2020. First item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes of November 18th, 2020. I make a motion to approve these minutes. Second. Okay, roll call vote, Jonathan? Yes. Fred, yes. Okay, moving on, vendor and payroll warrants. Any discussion? No, I'm good. Oh, okay, but it looks fine for me too. Uh, public comments, is there anybody uh, from the public that wishes to make uh, any comments uh, for items that are not on our agenda for this evening? No. Okay. Uh, we want to get into the uh, tax classification, Brian, or should we wait? Um, is, Jonathan, is that what you were getting at in terms of? We up? Yeah, Joyce is going to be want to want to be around for that. I'm 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 okay. I'm saying, do we go to say you know, 50th. adopting a social media policy that's applicable to the town of Waitley or? Um, Okay. You know, annual inspection report for the, I, I, you know, stuff that. Who's on the phone? Is that Joyce on the phone? No, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. I'm, just, I, I'm encouraging maybe Brian Fred to, to just look at it and say, okay, here's something that we can do quickly. It's going to be a, 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 a slam dunk kind of topic. So we can just do that because I don't want her to miss stuff that. Yeah. You know, okay. assuming she's going to be here. Oh, that's okay. Good. Okay, Brian. Then I'll, I'll turn the meeting over to you to, to pick the items that we can go through uh, quickly, I, I guess, and then we can come back to more items for discussion later on. Yeah, let's go to eight C. That's the the uh, transfer station annual inspection report. So each year, um, each year the transfer station needs to be inspected by by a third party and. That's part of what the Franklin County Solid Waste Di District does for the town. Um, you have a copy of the report. Everything was fine. Um, the one corrective action that's listed on the on the report is that the town in the past has collected scrap metal at the transfer station, and it was picked up by um, it was picked up by a third party, and that third party is no longer picking it up. And I think if, informally, people have been told that that scrap metal is not getting picked up, but there's still some depositing of scrap metal that's happening behind the highway garage. And I think the um, the solid waste committee needs to uh, make a decision. They could, I think they can pursue a modification of their, of the permit for the transfer station to allow the, the collection of scrap metal. But I think, I think the preference at this point, and Keith might be able to allude to this or talk on this a little bit more is that, is that we just not collect scrap metal anymore. Um, so there's going to have to be, some modifications made to hopefully stop people from dumping the scrap metal there. It, some of it happens after hours, I guess, I'm told. Um, but there's talks, Keith has had an idea of, of maybe installing uh, a video camera that covers the back of the highway garage um, to discourage people from doing that, posting signs and things like that. But overall, the report was good. So, and I'll just, I'll just need Fred to sign it when, when we have a chance. Okay, so the, the scrap metal issue, uh, it's something that needs to be addressed. And and if it, we decide that, that that will no longer be allowed for people to dump scrap metal, will we make this effective this evening or will we set a future date? Um, well, right now it, it, right now it shouldn't be happening. Um, but how do people know? Um, I think Keith is working on a, a plan for that for the Solid Waste Committee. So if anybody's watching, we should stop dumping scrap metal behind the highway garage. I, I haven't been behind the highway garage anytime lately, but can't we just also put a sign, no dumping scrap metal? Yep. Because I think it's pretty common knowledge. And and even the the, the attendants tell us, yeah, that's good. Right. Throw it over there. And, yeah. and you know, and, and it's like a very large basketball hoop. Yeah. Um, but if it's not allowed, it's not allowed. But put a big sign: no dumping. 
I think I think I honestly believe people will, will adhere to that. I think that people right. believe that it's something that is that is commonplace because there are people who collect scrap metal and and they use it to melt it down or whatever. I, you know, I don't know what you do with scrap metal, but right. Well, that's that's been happening for a long time. Long I know time. years ago, years ago there was different people there that were collecting it. So uh, yeah, we could ask Keith to put a, a sign down there and the other place by the by the shed there, you can squeeze through uh, that and one of the buckets to, to dump scrap metal there. So either sign there or close that access point off right there. So, okay, so we'll, uh, we'll ask Keith to, to sign it and close the access for that, I think. And put a sign up for no more scrap metal dumping there. Right, and I'll have to report that that I think Fred, you need to sign as the chairperson. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Um. You want to talk about the social media policy? Okay. Sure. Uh, because this is this is a, an item that we've talked about in the past. As I recall, we were talking about how we can have social media postings, but not allow for public comment on the social media postings, because then that would comply with open meeting laws. Is that an accurate statement, Brian? Um, yeah, we were talking about, about uh, I mean, one of the administrative headaches is, is comments. Right. Um, and people can write really whatever they please. Um, as far as I know, and I've tried to do some research on this, that 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 on a regular page like like we would set up is I I don't know how to completely turn off comments on Facebook. Um, you can put filters. The way that people get around it, um, I think, is that they put filters and they put common words you put really any word you can think of common words and it automatically prohibits posts that contain those words um i did talk with uh jim savine a little bit um they've had a facebook page for a while um they do allow comments on that page um and i think that's they get some useful feedback um from some of the comments that they hear on the page um that i don't know if they would get Otherwise, so it's it's really just a, a balancing act, I guess. Okay, can you pull that up on, on our screen? Yep, that's what I'm trying to do here. And there's a couple other pages that exist currently. I think the rec, uh, the Rec Commission has one. I think the Fire Department has one. Um, I know for sure the library has one. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're incredibly valuable pieces of communication. It, it's just a, a question of, of, of monitoring. I mean, I, do we know how many, how many posts a typical town gets on their Facebook page? I don't know. I think it, I guess it would depend on the town. I mean, there's part of me that wonders whether we just have a have a Facebook page for the town, and if I mean, if it gets overwhelming, then we when, then we reevaluate. But in, until there's an issue, well, let's hope that it's a manageable. I mean, the world is social media these days, whether you like it or not, and and it. It may be that that there's nothing to worry about, and if there is, we'll deal with it when we get there. That'd be my. We don't want to restrict this, though. Fred, did you want to see a different part of it? We we, we can try it, and if it it we can always change it. I I guess if we don't like what's happening on it. On the site, right? 
it, we can always take it down. Absolutely. How how often does Jim monitor his page? Do we is Jim on the call? No, I don't see him. No. How often does Jim monitor the page? I think they monitor it on a daily basis. I don't mean to imply that they post on a daily basis, but I, I think between he and Don, I think they I think they look at it on a daily basis. Well, that's the trick because I, I gotta tell you, it's pretty embarrassing for anybody to have a Facebook page and then not post for three months. It's just not, A, no one's gonna pay attention to you, so why have it? But B, it looks like you don't know what you're doing. Right, it goes stale and then right. people don't think of it as a reliable source of accurate information. So is it is it something that we could, you know, I laugh when I am even gonna mention this because obviously the people who work for the town don't have a lot of extra time on their hands. Um, is it something that we could find a social media volunteer and make that resp person responsible for making sure the page stays fresh, making sure there's no harmful language uh, to the extent that we can take down posts um, and still adhere to open meeting laws? I, I think the way to do this is to find someone who says, yeah, it's, it's something I can do with my slippers on. Yeah, that was the question I was going to ask is, uh, who's going to monitor this? I think it would be a joint effort by probably myself and Amy. Well, I, I, again, Brian, I'm not sure that you guys have much better things to do with your respective times than to monitor a Facebook page. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, but I mean, I think the reason, and I, Jonathan, you hit on it. That I think the, the reason that we want to that we want to we want to have another means of communication with residents, um, and it seems to be the way that a lot of a lot of younger people, younger people like me, because I'm so young, are, you know, that's how they get a lot of their information these days, <laughs> whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> right. But, but this this would allow anybody in town to, to ask a question, say, of town business on here, and you would respond to that? I don't I don't suggest we use it in that manner, no. No. No, okay. This I think it would be a one, one, one way. It would be it would be a one-way street. Oh, okay. Are anything on the site or anything on a Facebook page, is that considered public record? Yep. Okay. And there's there's a process within the policy of, of, of you have to log, if you're gonna delete something, you have to you have to log what it is. Um, you have to say what you deleted and that you, have, you need to keep a record of, of any deletions that, that take place. And I mean, quite honestly, the fact of the matter is there are Facebook pages currently in Waitley uh, that, that the town has, whether we want to call them formal or informal, that are being used um, to convey information. So um, I, I really think whether we whether we do a separate one for the town or not, I think it's it's good to, to have a policy to even govern the ones that we have existing, especially in terms of the public records part of it, because it's probably pretty easy to delete a comment that somebody might not like. Yeah, but right right now on our web page, Brian, we have when you open it up, there's there's tabs for uh, news and then what bulletins. So would this replace both of them, or are that still them two are still going to continue? No, those would continue. So would this would this appear there as another another folder say on there to open? I would. There would be a link to the to the town of Waitley Facebook page. Well, and, and 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 more importantly, reverse. I mean, the reality is more people follow Facebook than they do the Town of Waitley webpage. And so, Fred, the 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 the, the way I would envision it, um, having made a few of these in my day, is that you know you create a page that is is appealing enough to to have followers, and then 
when you really want information disseminated. You know, it, it, it could help with snow removal announcements. It could help with school closure, you know, any number of things. Yeah. Um, people are checking that page. They're getting their feed, their, you know, their feeds because they, they, they follow the page. And then they may be directed to the website. So that if there's something on the website that you really want to, to have people pay attention to, more than likely you're going to generate that attention because you posted it on Facebook. And it's a reminder to go visit the web page. Okay, Brian, do, so either surrounding towns or or frontier have anything like this? I think most surrounding towns, I think they do have Facebook pages and social media pages. And frontier certainly does. Okay, I think we're. I th and I'm, I think the, the police Facebook page has been around for years now, I, I think. Um, yeah. So this is, I mean, depending on how young you are, Facebook is for old people. Right. So that's. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, you want to stay really fr fresh. You, 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 you don't do a Facebook page, you do an Instagram page. TikTok is next. So I thought that's what we we're going to do. Okay. So, Brian, you're looking for us to take an action on this? Yeah, I mean, I think we should have a policy in place that that protects the town. Yes, so we'll be adopting the policy. Okay. Before we do that, let me ask anybody else that's that's on tonight's Zoom meeting with us have any comments on this they wish to make. No. Okay. I make a motion that we adopt the. Uh, social media policy that is presented here as of uh, today's date, I guess, put a date on it or something. Uh, yeah, I would second that. Hi. Okay, we'll, we'll call vote, Jonathan. Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay. I heard Joyce. Hi. Yes, yes. There's uh, no internet at my house, so I'm in my car and I'm driving to work. <laughs> and so I'll be on my phone until I get to work and then I'll be off for a minute and then I'll be on computer as normal. If that's, uh, uh, that, that's I think, how we can proceed, <laughs> at least. Okay, Ryan, about the, the Waitley Center Woods project. Yeah, well, we, we can go to the, 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 the hearing now because Joyce is with us. And there are people here, I'm guessing, we aren't going to stick around beyond the... Well, oh, okay. I think that's a good assumption. Yeah, so I, I, I've got your oh, back. I've got your back, Paul. And, and Jim, I have your back, too. Eight. I wouldn't want to forget um, about you. That's great. Okay, yeah, we, I see we have our, our, our assessor here. Cynthia is also with us. Uh, I don't know if it's at least audio, I guess. Uh, okay, the... Uh, Open the hearing for the fiscal year 2021 tax classification hearing. Uh, I think we all received uh, uh, several of the forms that are used to uh, calculate the, the, the various uh, options we have on, on the tax rate and, and the numbers that go into it. Uh, Brian sent us that. Uh, Okay, Brian, I'll turn that over to you. You had some, we had three or four questions that we need to uh, discuss and decide on. Right, so so the purpose of the hearing tonight for a tax classification hearing is, is to solicit comments on determining the fiscal year 21. So that's the current fiscal year tax allocation between five classes of taxable real property. Those are residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal property. Um, the questions, it really boils down to, to four questions, um, three in this, well, really three for Waitley, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, so the first question is whether the town adopts a single or split tax rate. And if it adopts a single tax rate, that means you're, you're taxing um, each parcel, regardless of the classification um, equally. And if it's a split tax rate, you can, you can adopt different tax rates between um, residential and open space properties versus what's called CIP, commercial, industrial, personal property. The second question has to do with whether the town wants to adopt an open space discount. Um, but we have no 
So that applies to what's called class 200 properties. Um, that's open space, um, open space that's not otherwise chapter land or otherwise protected. And currently the assessors don't have any class 200 properties um, class, uh, classified as any properties classified as 200. So that's really not a, a question that's relevant tonight. Um, the town could adopt a residential exemption um, and what that does is it lowers the um, it lowers the tax burden for uh, residential parcels that are the primary that are the the primary residence of the taxpayer. Um, the towns that usually adopt this um, usually have a lot of rental properties or um, rental properties or vacation homes. So it shifts the, the the burden of paying taxes within the residential category classification of properties to really second homes. Um, then the fourth question is in terms of whether the town wants to adopt a small commercial exemption. Um, it's similar to the residential exemption in the sense that it shifts the burden within um, a classification. And in this case, it shifts the burden um, away from small commercial businesses, which are defined as less than 10 employees. Um, and also the property needs to be assessed at a value of less than a million dollars. Um, so really the three questions are, are single or split tax rate, um, whether the town will adopt the residential exemption and whether the town wants to adopt a small commercial exemption. Um, so that's, those are really the, the three questions that need to be answered and the, the public hearing is the time I think that the select board would solicit comment from people who wanna provide information to help you make the decision. Can I ask a question? Okay, sure. Uh, should, before we get into, should we do each question that we need to decide on individually rather than jumping all around, Brian? Uh, I, you may have comments that are related to all of them, so maybe just maybe solicit some uh, input and then and then address the three questions. Yeah. Okay. But it's up, it's really up to you. Oh, okay. Uh, start with okay, Paul. You. Uh, Comment. Yeah, I have a question um, regarding the um, the correspondence that Brian sent out uh, concerning question two. Um, that at this point in time, Waitley does not categorize property as class two open space, but instead uses the vacant land classification. When I look on LA four comparison report from the state. There is no vacant land. It only says open space. So is vacant land taxed in a different manner? Well, it wouldn't be. It'd be one, I guess. But how does the how does the town view vacant land versus open space? And according to the definition, if it's open space, it has to have some public value to it. So it's a little bit ambiguous. Is that a question or do I need to shorten that up a little bit? I would, I would defer to the assessors on, on classification of, of, of property. Okay, well, okay, well let, let me ask Cynthia, could you answer that or do you want me to do that? Are you asking me, Fred? Or well, no, okay. yeah, we okay. uh, since we don't have open open space land identified, I guess it's not really a, a discussion. It is uh, the vacant vacant land? Uh, if it's a building lot that, is, that isn't uh, built on open vacant land, it's assessed as a building lot. Anything that's beyond the definition of a building lot, either because of square footage or it's behind the, uh, a lot that, that has a building on it is, is assessed at a, at a reduced value. So, well, maybe just- It says value is, is, re, is reduced, but the tax rate is, is the same for that property. Sure, okay. When when you guys define vacant, 
How do you define that? There's no building. There's just there. no building. No. Do you want me to answer this? Well, go ahead, Cynthia. Do you want to? I was just going to say that we use the 200 category specifically and only for chapter land. It's something that we that we adopted several years ago so that if we ever did split the tax rate, the farmers would not get the commercial rate. We don't use the 200 for vacant land or anything else. Vacant land is a, is a residential 100 category, not a 200. Thank you. Okay. Could I ask a more general question? Sure, go ahead, Jim. This is the first time I've been invited to a discussion on this topic. Uh, I've only been on the Finance Committee a few years, so it may have come up before my time, but I'm just wondering what's driving this discussion in general to begin with um, since, since I've been involved. You know, Jim, I, it's, it's a very fair question because I was wondering the same thing because historically, this conversation takes about 10 minutes. Um, and historically, we have always agreed that we wanna keep the one to one, the, 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 same, the same tax rate for all types of properties in town and we moved on. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. So I, I, I'd love to know the genesis of the conversation as well other than we're doing our, our due diligence as we're supposed to. If I can. Well, wait a minute. Let's, okay, let's, quick, finish, let's finish on Jonathan's point let's first. Let's address what, what Jonathan and Jim are, are, are asking a question on. Brian, you, you I guess, initiated some of these questions. Could you explain further why? Well, these questions, it, so when we submit to DLS to set the tax rate, we need to fill in a form called a LA-5 and ask us for the answers to these questions that need to be decided by law by the select board uh, before we can set the tax rate. Um, in the past, I, I think the, I'm not sure that the finance committee was ever given sort of direct notification of, of this process. I believe there was a request that during the last uh, round of finance committee meetings that the finance committee be more involved in the financial decisions of the town. So respecting that request, I wanted to um, make sure you guys had notice of the meeting. So this discussion does come up every year before the select board. Yep. Yes. Okay. I understand. Okay. If I can comment yes. now. Yes. Uh, I've always thought that, and Jonathan, you can explain why the select board in the past has wanted to stay with a flat rate. I think that going to a split rate would give us a lot more flexibility in being able to keep taxes down for residential uh, taxpayers. Uh, I, I've, I've gone into the state numbers quite a bit. About a third of the municipalities in the state have split systems. Uh, most of them are cities and suburbs, but not all. And one municipality in particular drew my attention, that was Irving. Franklin County, same size as us, and they have a substantially split tax rate. And they've got the same situation actually the Waitley does, and that they've got, in their case, one, maybe two, as we do, large industrial uh, properties owned out of owned by non-town residents that pays a substantially higher rate than the and is able to keep down the residential rate because of these large industrial properties. Uh, there's one other town, Florida, which has by far the largest discrepancy in the state. Their industrial commercial rate is triple their residential rate, but that's because I, I looked at the maps. Florida has a hydroelectric dam, which isn't moving, so they can tax them essentially however they want without fear of that prop, that uh, utility moving out of town. 
I recognize there are other issues involved in particularly with commercial properties and I would urge adopting the resident the commercial exemption that Brian mentioned before but I think this is a way to try to help relieve pressure on the residential tax base by taxing we've got two or three large uh, I think two two or three specific properties account for roughly 70% of our industrial tax base. Our industrial, we've got 21 million in assessed industrial tax base. And I think there are two or three properties that account for 70% of that. Uh, so it's not, and the commercial tax base is roughly the same, but that's spread out over a large number. And I think most of those would be eligible for the commercial exemption. Uh, we would have to deal with those that did not qualify for that commercial exemption, see what we could do. But I just think it's a good way to raise revenue from out of town and help keep taxes down for everyone else. I mean, I mean, Fred, it's a philosophical discussion, obviously. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure Irving any longer is. I'm actually surprised that Irving still has that 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 policy simply because my guess is that was instituted when um, when that made when their major employer was a lot more uh, successful. Well, than it currently Jonathan, if I can have just a second, I've got last the 2020 breakdown on Irving's on um, everyone's uh, revenues and 91.26% of Irving's tax levy came from you commercial utility as opposed Waitley is roughly 20%. Right. I think that Irving actually has the highest percentage in the state of outside of Florida maybe of utility of an industrial take share of the tax levy. Well, I think the 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 other thing to, to consider is uh, you're you're looking at existing commercial properties in town. I, I think we also got to be careful of attracting new businesses, new commercial properties to town. And if you're going to raise the tax rate, you say as an example on State Road Route Five, there, there's there's properties out there for sale right now. Uh, and there is, there is new commercial development being built uh, almost every year. There's new uh, businesses popping up or, or changing hands or making improvements. And I think if we start raising the tax rate for, for that type of activity in town, people aren't going to look at moving to Waitley, to build in Waitley. We've had substantial increases in commercial property values on, on, say, on Route 5 alone. I, I just think it's it's going to hurt us. I, I mean, well, it, properties, Fred, it, have, it, properties have been vacant, have been on the market for a while, uh, just like in, in surrounding communities uh, up and down Route 5. I mean, it's, it's everybody trying to attract more people, more businesses. And if we raise our rate, that, that, that doesn't help. Well, f first of all, the rate doesn't have to raise be raised tremendously. It can be you know, 10 or 20 percent over the other rate, which would be way, way under what the average is for the state. Second, you may or may not attract fewer commercial businesses, commercial enterprises. But if you keep taxes low for residential, that will help residential property values by having lower taxes. Now, which what you're, you've got a trade off there of trying to, you know, guess whether that slightly higher commercial rate. Now, also, you look at the other towns in the state, especially the suburban towns, their commercial rate is substantially higher than the residential rate. So right. it's not that a higher commercial rate will drive away commercial businesses. Well, but, but Fred, I think that depends largely sometimes on a reason that a commercial business may have decided to put down roots in a specific town. It may, it may be because the person is from the town. It may be because there's a 
there's a strategic reason to be in that town as opposed to another town. Um, you know, I live in fear on a regular basis that Yankee Candle will someday decide there's no reason to be in Western Massachusetts at all, uh, especially their manufacturing plant, that they could do that a mu at, at a much cheaper, uh, in a much cheaper way somewhere else. And if that were the case, that would hurt us dramatically. Um, I, I completely agree, but I will, a difference in 20,000 or $30,000 a year in taxes be the difference for Yankee Candle staying or leaving. I don't think that in the scheme of things, that's a, it's a significant sum for us. I don't think it's a significant sum for them. There will be other uh, factors involved in it, making it that. Is, let, me, let me just say, without identifying businesses, some of these large commercial ones, even the, the, I, maybe the two or three you're talking about, we've had issues with them before, with tax rates, with paying taxes, and they've been fighting us. Maybe not the last year or two, but we can go, ba we can go back and Cynthia can attest to this as well, that we had some major discussions with some of these major manufacturing companies before, and, and it's the 20, 30, 40, $50,000 they're arguing about. They're making an issue with that already. It has occurred. And now if you want to increase their taxes by that, we see that, that uh, uh, I don't know, more issues coming up with dealing with these commercial properties. You, you, you don't understand the past history. I guess, Fred, uh, I, I guess if we were to do that, we'd have to go back and see the, 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 the assessed values, the tax rates, what, uh, what uh, abatements, what issues we've had with each of these large commercial developments, commercial properties, and, and see, is it worth taking a risk to increase the tax rate? You know, there's more to it than just increasing the tax rate and, and I, 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 I fully money. understand. <clears throat> I fully understand there's more to it than that. But you have to look at other things. Also, it's not just I, I keep getting back to the residential side of it. And you're saying you've got issues with the industry, you know, with the industries and the commercial assessments. How many and, you know, threaten. Yankee Candle or anyone else threatening to leave, how many residential people have had to leave because of taxes? And how many might we be able to keep here if the taxes weren't quite as high? Well, you're, you're really speculating. Uh, oh, this is all speculation. Yeah, it's all speculation. I, I, I know, but there's various, re, various, maybe more reasons for a residential to, to be the way it is today in town. Uh, and, and to say if, if taxes are reduced in residential, we would get more residential property. Uh, I don't know, we, we still have an, a, a major increase or significant increase in residential values in town. Brian showed that on, on, on the information you got. We, we keep increasing because new, new residential properties are, are uh, developing in town and there's gonna come to be a limit sometime. Uh, the, the subdivision is, is just about sold out and, and yeah, there's new areas being opened up and, and developed, but uh, I, I guess just there, there's so many different reasons why residential is occurring or not occurring in Waitley. And I, I, I guess as an assessor, we haven't seen the tax rate, people complaining. Yeah, they can make issues and, and request abatements for for their taxes, for their assessed values. And yes, it does occur. There are a few people that, that, that do that, but the majority of people aren't complaining about it. Can I make yeah. a comment? Yep. Okay, Paul? Yeah, sure. Just, um, I think this is a great conversation. Um, and I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here, so to speak, but um, we've had a single tax rate for as long as I can remember. And if we're gonna go down this road, um, I think we have to model it out and see who it impacts and what that impact is and what the benefits are on the other side. So that this has to be done on a spreadsheet. And then we can have an intelligent conversation as to how to move forward. Um, that's a lot of work. And keeping it at one is easy. 
Fred, it's easy for you. It's easy for everybody yeah. that, that has to deal with it. And it's an easy thing to do. But, uh, you know, like the old saying, if you um, do what you've done, you'll have what you've got. And maybe what we've got is the best we can get. I don't know. But I think that Fred brings up, Fred B, brings up um, a discussion that needs to be flushed out. And um, I, I think it, it needs to be flushed out for the benefit of residential taxpayers, because the residential taxpayers are the ones that pay for the town, for, for well, the most part. Well, Paul, I would I would I would caution on that because as much as you know the split, as Fred pointed out, is what 80, 80, 78, 20, I mean, yeah, seventy eight twenty two or something like that. Right. Um, if, if we, we were, were to, to tap, tap, I'm sorry. I didn't say anything. Oh, you're echoing. Oh, I'm sorry. If, <laughs> if we were to suddenly have a decrease in commercial taxation, and it's, I'm saying if we don't know, as everyone agrees to, um, it, it could, and it would impact our residential um tax rate potentially and the services we can deliver to residents all I, my only point is that this needs to be modeled out and i think the telling um the operative word in your response there is if right nobody knows we don't real it, and someone has to do the work to model this out to see what the outcomes are um and i just it, it speaks, um, it speaks highly of the management team of the town, if they were to do that. Um, and by not doing it, I don't know what it says, but um, we've, we, we that's, have- That's brutal, Paul, come on now. We've had one tax rate forever. And maybe that's the best thing for us. I, I get that. Uh, my point is that I, I, I'm not sure it's fair to insinuate that the management of the town is, is poor if we were not to pick this up as, a, as something to, to consider and research. That's my only point. It's, it, it's, 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 it's a way of saying you're good at your job if you agree with me and you're bad at your job if you don't agree with me. And I don't think that's appropriate. Well, it's about action. It's, it's about doing things versus well, yeah. how you feel or you know, how you think about a certain parameter or it's the actual work and it's the actual, the black and white of it. And that's how management is measured. Okay, but you know, the other thing to consider, you know, Fred Barron only mentioned one other town in Franklin County doing this, why? What about surrounding towns for us? Do they go through this kind of analysis and just and, and really seriously look at in at, at changing the making a split tax rate? There's 25 mm. other towns in, in Franklin County plus at, at, County. Fred, There's Fred, you're size. right. They're... Wait a minute, they're a similar size to, to us. And and I guess I don't hear maybe I'm missing it, but big discussions and, and analysis and and, and comparisons uh, of tax rates and all these other communities. If this was something that was serious, that would help residents. Uh, maybe Fred, if, I, if I may, there's, there's one big difference <laughs> between Waitley and most of the other towns, and that we and that is we have a small number of very large industrial properties that most of these towns don't have. And that is the difference of why we, I think we should consider, I'm not saying we should do it. I'm saying we should consider it, maybe look at it over the course of the next year to decide to do it next December when this comes up again. Okay. But we, okay. that's why I brought up Irving. Irving is different because they've got a large industrial property yeah. okay. that is abnormal for this area. Okay, I hear your comments. Let, let, we got a few other people I want to talk here. Okay, Lynn and then and then Joyce. Okay, I just have two comments. Um, 
I'm a little worried about how the, if you split the tax rate, how it would affect our smaller commercial uh, businesses, because I really don't think they'll qualify for the small business exemption. Most of them would have more than 10 employees. Um, and as soon as that happens, they wouldn't get that small exemption. And I think historically, because I've been around for a long time, those that was one of the reasons why we never really delved into uh, determining a, a split tax rate, uh, mainly because we didn't want it to affect those smaller business, smaller commercial businesses in town. And secondly, I, I you also actually just commented that, that we could investigate this over the coming year um, because we do have to set the tax rate. <laughs> right. And there's just not enough time at this point in time to, um, I need to get bills out by the end of the month. So that's not something we're gonna be able to do in a couple of weeks. So um, that's well, all absolutely. I have to say. This shouldn't be decided at one meeting. I wanted to raise right. it for okay. investigation okay, of, for instance, Lynn, how many small businesses are actually big? are you know we know there are some and how big an impact would it have on them and how many of them would be impacted i think we're guessing we just we don't know okay let's let's continue here uh joyce you had a comment you wanted to make joyce you gotta unmute you i think she's on the move yeah, I was moving to a room where I can be by myself and uh, take off a mask. Um, I have no problem with looking at numbers and trying to make a decision based on more numbers next year. I would be really surprised if um, you know modest increases to the 20% of our tax base that is uh, commercial would really get us anything in terms of a reasonable reduction I mean, we've already got the four to one, right? So every dollar you don't get from someone in the 80% of residential, you've got to raise the taxes of the people in that 20% by $4. And so you could make what seems like a really significant increase on the commercial side and not really make a dent that people would notice in residential. And to really to tell whether that's the case or not, we really would need some numbers, which I don't object to. Um, and But I think uh, for today, I would like to move that we do not split the tax rate and that we uh, ask the Finance Committee uh, to work with Brian to uh, come up with some uh, scenarios to look at next year. Is that a motion you're making, Joyce? That is a motion. Okay, I'll second that motion. Well, I, I would I would say that it, it should be a, a, a joint initiative between the select board and the finance committee on the on, on on doing the research on the tax rate. And you also you also really need to include the board of assessors here. Yeah. Um, it's not because they're the ones they're the ones that that deal with all the values. They're the ones that can request. They can request from uh, Department of Workforce Development the, um, a list of businesses in town that have ten or fewer employees. That would give us a pretty good idea of, of, of who would who would make it and who wouldn't. Um, and I would just echo what what Lynn had said. I I think there's been concern in the past about what what we call the the big little companies in town um, and how that would impact them. But again, we're not going to know that until we see until um, we could we could get that list from the state. So I, I mean, it's really it's really something that needs to involve the board of assessors as well. Um, it's typically it's typical that, that the board of assessors would make recommendations to the select board. Um, so, so, so I would amend the motion to say that a, a working group should be established by the select board uh, made up of the select board finance committee and board of assessors to um, to better understand what the what it, what a change in the tax rate would do to both residential and commercial um, uh individuals and organizations in Whateley. I would take that as a friendly amendment and I would uh, second it. Okay, any further discussion before we vote? Okay, roll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay, that's the first question. Brian, do, what's the, the second one on? 
Um, well, that's single or split tax rate. And then the other, the, the second one is an open space discount, which, which doesn't really apply in this case. Third is residential exemption. And then the, the last one is a small commercial exemption, which is really what we've been, well, half of what we've been talking about. So we need to make a decision on them too? Or? Yep. Um, Historically, it's, the, the town has declined to adopt those exemptions. I would move that uh, for this year, we decline to uh, adopt those exemptions, but this could be something that our subcommittee looks at or working group looks at. I would second that. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay. Are we done with the class tax classification hearing, Brian? Yep. Okay. Okay, moving moving on. Uh, agenda is uh, we jumped around a little. Joyce, waiting for you to to join us. So uh, we didn't. So we'll go uh, back to, to the order that we had Brian set up here. Uh, first scheduled appointment was uh, the 250th committee to inform the select board of activities that will be going on. And that was either, I guess, Keith uh, and or Susan. Yep, I, I can kick it off. Okay. Um, when we started all of this a couple of years ago, we had absolutely no idea what the world was going to be like. We had planned um, a week and a half of celebration in June of 2021. In talking with the Board of Health, they think that is unlikely. Um, and the, our committee talked about this and agreed for the most part, that we don't want to have the celebration until we can have the celebration that we want to have. And if there are restrictions on the numbers of people who can be in any one gathering, we want a townwide celebration. The Board of Health, so we've pretty much walked away from June. The Board of Health was supposed to have, have met with us this month, but they've said that they don't have enough information yet to know the two windows that we are considering are September of 2021 or spring of 2022. They don't have enough information at this point to help us make that call of, will we be able to do what we want to do in September of 2021. So I don't have an answer for you about when we will be doing this. We have an extensive list of the activities that we would like to have at this event, assuming we can do everything that we want to do. And it includes parade, fireworks, potentially a gala, um, family day, and a number of other things, but everything is kind of in limbo at the moment because we can't really do the planning mm -hmm. until we know mm -hmm. when we're planning for. We are also concerned that once the world opens up, it's sort of going, it's going to be kind of like a dam bursting that there's going to be demand for things like the fireworks company, all the bands that we want for the parade. So, we need to make a decision as soon as we can, but we don't wanna make a decision unless we are confident that that is reality because moving the thing, planning and moving is just not, not efficient. So we will have to get back to you on when we would like to do this. That said, I have a couple of updates that I can give you on things that we have been able to do. The first is fundraising. We've had to um, pull back from approaching the businesses in the community, asking them for money because the first question that they are asking us is when is, you know, 
when is this event that you want me to help fund? And what we, the, we put together a menu of, you can sponsor this event or you know, that event or that event. And until we are confident which events we'll be able to hold, we can't really ask them for money. However, we included an item in the scoop in uh, September, maybe? I'm September. Looking, looking, yeah. And we, we really were just letting people know what was going on and trying to get the message out, particularly to the small businesses. But we provided the opportunity for anyone who wanted to donate to do so. And much to our amazement, checks are still dribbling in and from individuals. And to date, we've raised about $1,700. Is that accurate, Fred? Yeah, about $1,700, yeah. Yeah. Just in, we, in small contributions. Yeah, yeah, just you know, $25 and $50 uh, checks. And they're, you know, they haven't completely stopped. So that tells us there's a lot of enthusiasm in the community for this, uh, that pe people have not lost interest in us doing this. So that's good news. We put an item in the scoop that just went out a couple of days ago that we have ordered masks with our logo on it and we've started distributing them and we're getting some orders for those, we had somebody, and Keith, we have you to thank for this, somebody pulled into our driveway the other day who had been talking to you and you had directed him to us and he wanted his masks. So he you know, came and basically rang the doorbell to get some, you know, to get masks from us. So we are, are selling- being advertised, Susan? I'm curious. I haven't seen them. Where are they being advertised? Well, currently it's it's on in the scoop, and Joyce was able to put in a photograph of them. It's the very first item, our item in the scoop. <clears throat> it's also on our Facebook page. And the discussion before about Facebook pages, the two fiftieth has one. It, it's there. It's also on our website. Uh, originally, we had hoped to set up a table at the transfer station figuring that's the best way to reach people and the Board of Health put the kibosh on that because they don't want people gathering. So we're limited in what we can do to, to get the word out and we're relying on word of mouth. We've given them, we've, so we're selling them for $10 a piece, but we've given them to people like the people who work at the transfer station, hoping that they would wear them and people would see them and ask. Um, so anybody who has thoughts on how to get the word out even more so, we're not viewing this as a fundraiser. You know, we're hoping that we sell enough to cover our costs, but it's great advertising if people are walking around town with our logo you know, on their face. We've also done fairly well with the pottery sales. And I, Keith, do you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, the, the pottery sales have have done well. We're um, accepting our, which is more likely going to be the last opportunity for people to order, um, which is coming up at the end of the month is probably, I think, the cutoff date for that. And so we have already gotten the first order in back in um, and dispersed somewhere. I think it was in June or July. We finally got it out to everybody. Again, COVID really slowed that process down, but um, so a lot of everybody that had ordered it originally got their orders in. And so the next round will be manufactured during the winter months and the spring and will be dispersed next spring. A couple other things that are happening is um, Melissa Caldwell has organized with the Historical Society, and I think you know, talking to you, Brian, and other people involved in this, to put some lights on the milk bottle, um, calling it calling out the 250th. So getting that the word out through there. The quilt committee is moving ahead. Be, you know, people who can be doing something individually is happening. I'm you know, calling out the quilt committee because each person is doing their own 
piece of it. And then when the world opens up again, they'll put it together. So we're doing what we can to keep things moving, but until we can commit to a date, um, we're sort of limited in what we can do. If I can put in one other thing on the pottery sale, sorry. The, to the gross pottery sales have been about $7,000 of which the committee keeps 40%. So we've raised close to $3,000 from the pottery sales so far, just yeah. which to put is a nice. number to it. That's nice. And, and Susan, I assume you're coordinating with neighboring towns because some of them are having celebrations at the same time or, or year after us, so. Well, yeah, I mean, we've, we've been working with Hatfield. Keith, Keith has been in touch with Hatfield because they had to postpone their celebrations. The next one that we're up against would be Deerfield. Williamsburg never really got going. Oh. Um, theirs would also be 2021 and they just have not had a large presence in this space. Um, the next one that's on the calendar, and I don't have in front of me if it's 2022, I think, is, is Deerfield. Uh, I've been watching there. They have a, a Facebook page watching, and they're not really saying much there either. And I really can't remember if they're 2022 or 23. 23. Uh, 23. Okay. So we've, we've got room from them. There wasn't anybody else that I recall who was 2022. It's more anyone from 2020, anyone meaning Austin Williamsburg who have to push things into 22. Because I believe Hatfield's going forward, forward with their plans this spring unless that changed over the past few weeks. The only thing Hatfield's doing in 21 and they're technically doing it before they turn 351 and that is on May 31st they're having their their parade since they postponed it um their their incorporation date is um I believe it's June 1st and so the way they look at it they're having their parade on their very last day of being 350 so they can still call themselves 350 and the next day they'll be 351 so um and again, the parade, so many um, restrictions are out there right now in regards to the parade and the capabilities. For instance, the bands, the, the, the Port of Health has already told us that a, a band wind instruments need to be 12 feet apart in each in any direction. So um, it's one of those things where if you have a band, the, the back of the band won't even be able to hear the front of the band. They'll be spread out so far. So. Um, things of that nature are just discouraging right at the moment. And um, but other than that, Hatfield had to, has had to pretty much modify everything that they've done. And one of the biggest things they have coming up in a couple of weeks is their luminarium and their fireworks. And in the case of the the, the luminarium, they have had to um, really seriously made a lot of changes. No outdoor events in the groups that they've had they've have to be all restricted so taking all that into account that's what we're trying to avoid having happen for us in june of 21 we don't want to have all of our committees work hard to put things together and then turn around and find out that we can't do it two weeks beforehand or that we're told we can't do it but um at the same point in time as everybody knows the vaccines are are rapidly starting to ramp up and we may we may be able to pull things off pretty well in 20 in sometime in 21 and that's why we want the board of health's input and and see what we can best do our incorporation date is what april sometime april. yeah it's april yeah hey, keith if you thought of extending the the date for the the uh, pottery sale you know, um, it's we have, but it, it's to a certain extent, it's limitations on the potter, and he's at the moment um, seemed to be reluctant on committing. And it, it's not that he wouldn't, but he's had not definitely said he would yet either. So we're, we'd like to. We we asked that question of him, but if he's not willing to to do it, then we we can't. Okay. 
Any other discussion on the, the 250th celebration coming up? I think they're doing a great job. Thank you. Once we meet with the Board of Health and have an idea of timing, believe me, you will hear from us. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your efforts. Thank all of you, you uh, for being with us on a Zoom meeting this evening. So uh, please keep us informed. If you have a major decision, something going on or need our input, you're welcome to join us at our meetings. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the, the reason we haven't been is because we didn't know what to tell you. We are in such a strange limbo. Yeah. We didn't know, we still don't know what you know, or when we can do things. You and everybody else. So it's Exactly. Not we knew you'd understand. Yeah. But oh, if feel... I can throw in one more financial comment, the town has committed $40,000 over the past couple of years to the event, and we've not drawn on any of that money yet. Okay. Just so you know. Okay, that's good to hear you. Please keep us informed. Will do. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on, our next appointment we have is with uh, our dear friends from Castaways, Julius and, and Nicholas, to discuss a request to reduce the license fees for calendar year 2021. Okay, either uh, Julius or or Nick, you wish to uh, comment? How's everyone doing? Great, thank you. Good. Glad to hear it. Good to see everyone. It's been some time. Um, so we're before the board today to ask uh, for relief on the liquor license fee. Um, other towns have, have waived the fees. Um, everyone has a different process. In Wheatley, as you know, uh, we made a request and uh, it would be great if you guys can help us out. As you know, the state won't allow us to open. Um, and honestly, from a health standpoint, given the nature of the business, we probably wouldn't open in such uncharted territory. Um, I don't see a scenario where we open any sooner than the late fall, winter of 2021. Um, otherwise, I think during our very limited ownership, we've been good neighbors, uh, complied with everything and to the best of our ability. I know we had a hiccup with the wall. We made good on that. And um, we really spent a lot of time and resources complying with everything. So hopefully uh, we put our best foot forward in the past. I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off. I personally have no problem issuing this um, waiver. They've been uh, out of business since the middle of March. Um, so um, the, the, the past year's fees were received uh, and, and they weren't in business. Um, and they're probably not gonna be in business as, as he points out, you know, September. Uh, and it's all going to be predicated on the vaccine and the and 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 the herd menta the, the the herd impact. I, you know, I have no problem asking for this waiver. That being said, if all of a sudden you guys are open in 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 July August, I I'm gonna ask to, you know, if if you guys would out of the goodness of your heart reconsider that. Um, but I I have no problem with it. Fair enough. I have a, Thanks. I have a procedure question, I guess for Brian, do we approve a, a license with no fees or do we approve a license with reduced fees for the fourth quarter? Do we have to approve anything, any kind of license today? All right. Um, so right now, right now they've fully paid their license. Um, that's just in terms of how we've done it. So it would be a, it would be, a, we would reimburse them for whatever the, whatever amount the board decides. You mean for 2021, right, Brian? For 2021, correct. Just so, the timing. Yeah, the timing of the request and, and how we needed to process things with the ABCC. We asked them to, to pay in full and then the board could discuss it. So can they still have the license if we refund the total fee? Um. 
That's a good question. I, I would want to double check that, but I think yes, you could. Wait, say that part again. I'm sorry, I missed it. I said I would want to double check that, but yes, I think you could. What? I'm sorry. A friend asked if you could refund the entire amount. And they still have the license. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if we can't, if we need to get around that, maybe we do a dollar. I, it, I mean, it's it's something that really could be done. Okay, so do we need a proposal from them for that or? Well, if he sent the, the, well, the letter, <laughs> has to be a waiver. the letter doesn't, go ahead, Joyce. Yeah, um, I'd be more comfortable with 50% uh, with like we did for the Waitley Inn. And I know the situations aren't exactly the same, but um, that's just, that's what my gut is telling me. Yeah, I guess the difference for me is the Waitley Inn's operating at, at a reduced capacity, and that's why we we uh, granted the, the waiver that we did. Uh, yeah, like I said, I understand they're different, but I'm, I guess I'm more comfortable with 50%. Okay, and so where else do we have a alcohol license other than, I know Quan Quan Farms has a seasonal one that doesn't start yet. Where else? I think you you gave us a list somewhere in uh, the uh, information on today's meeting, Brian. Uh, yep. Um, which kind of license are you wondering about? Well, we're applying just to the alcohol license, right? Is that, or is this all licenses that they have? Um, just alcohol. We, we paid. We paid the entertainment and didn't request the reduction there. Okay. Oh, albeit it's a much smaller number. So Fred Castaways, um, Waitley Diner, Waitley Inn, Circle K, Muffins, and Quan Quan. So we're talking Circle K and that are, that are open right now, other Circle K and, and Muffins are the other two. And and they, those are not on-premise licenses. Those are on premise been open for business the entire time, both of them. So, yep. Okay. Uh, so, I guess the question is if we, I guess, first decide to give them a reduced fee, and then second is the amount, whether. Uh, the fifty percent, or or some other amount. To yep. Do I hear a motion? I guess I'll make a motion to 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 waive it by by one hundred percent. He's not going to be open, and he hasn't been open. That's 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 the point. I mean, you in totality, they won't be open, probably for 18 months, 18 to, 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 to 20 months out of a, out of a two year span of time. I, you know, it, they paid their fee last year and they weren't open for, you know, 75% of the time, more than 75% of the time. Uh, and, and, and to ask, and, and to ask for even 50% when they're not gonna be open for 75% of the time this year. It just, you know, I, I, I would, so my motion is 100%. Okay, I'll, I'll second that motion. And if we need to put a dollar amount minimal to keep the license open, Brian will look at that. Yeah, you guys are fine with that, right? Yes. Okay. Thank Appreciate you. It. Okay, any Thank you very much. discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Jonathan? Yes. Joyce? No. Fred? Yes. Hey guys, not that it's related at all, and it really is not, but since I'm probably not gonna talk with you for quite a while, um, as you probably know, a plow took out part of the wooden fence. No. 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 Okay. Um, Was this within the last few weeks? No. No, quite a while ago. Last year. 
um, and it's near the end of the fence by Christian Lane. It's one of the sections. Mm. Okay. Um, and it it just it, it it looks you know bad. No um, problem. I think it's we'll an care of it. fix, but it'd be great if it were, were four fixed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll take care of it. Okay. The, the other the other thing I've noticed and. In, in, Maybe it's still going to happen. Is the the fence by the that smoking area, the the block wall that you made, should be connected to that block wall. I think that was part of the agreement. Now, I don't know whether that's still coming to do that or not. But if you're going to fix the fence, like Jonathan is referring to, you may want to add that couple of feet section to to abut to that concrete block wall. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you very Thanks. much. Have a good holiday. Okay, you too. Okay, moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda is COVID 19 state of emergency. We've got uh, two items here. Uh, Brian, you want to take the lead on this? Yeah, the first one is just the standing item that we have in terms of the the orders and directives that the board uh, has currently in force. Um, as you know, conditions have changed um, for the worse over the past, well, it's been trending this way for a long time, but a um, month or so. Um, I asked the Board of Health for a recommendation as to what, if anything, should change for um, town buildings. Um, and the Board of Health met last night and i'll just read what what was what was written back um it says the whitley board of health this is from fran fortino the, the whitley board of health just met and given the rising number of covid cases locally um we can say that there that there are five active cases in town in the last three days um regionally and statewide uh, we recommend rolling back in-person access to town buildings by appointment whenever possible for the town offices and suspending in-person browsing at the library. We suggest that this continue through the holidays to the second week of January if current COVID trends continue. Um, so the state is rolling with, uh, sorry, roiling with new cases and the governor announced a rollback in reopening, I believe that was yesterday, um, since hospitals and healthcare are getting stretched. Not a good scenario facing us in the next few weeks. Our recommendations are made out of an abundance of caution. Please contact us. Please contact us if you have questions. Um, so that's, I don't know if we want to do anything with the recommendation from, from the Board of Health in terms of town buildings. Okay. I will just add that I, I, I believe the, the, the library trustees have, have suspended in person, uh, in person, in person browsing, uh, by appointment, at least temporarily. You know, I personally think we should be doing everything possible to keep people safe and, and healthy. I, I don't see why why we would even let people know that people are working in the town offices because if people know that people are working in the town offices, the 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 chance or the propensity to say I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop by and see if they'll if they'll take care of something for me. I I, I just don't. You know, the last time I checked, 275,000 people have died. Mm -hmm. And and to not doing everything we can to make sure that um, that statistic isn't increased uh, by by stuff we've done in Waitley is just foolish on our part. So I, I you know, I'd go beyond what the Board of Health recommends, but that's just me. Well, I think there's, there's two questions, really. One, do we open the, the town offices uh, limited like we have now? And the second is, do we want town employees in there? If, if say they're they're close to the public, do we still want town employees to to work there and be in the building whenever they need? I I see there's two questions. One, we're we closing it to everybody outside, and I I guess I see that happening with surrounding towns uh, now closing their buildings to the general public. Uh, I don't, I don't hear whether they're allowing their employees to come in or not. I don't know if that's possible, but 
uh, yeah. and and over the holidays here, uh, I maybe Brian or Lynn knows how much uh, business you you get people coming and going while paying bills and whatever, uh, and how much of a inconvenience say it is if people just put it in a drop box instead of coming to you personally. Is that a, a big deal or not? That's not my biggest problem. My biggest problem is I don't have access to my computer programs from home. I don't have access to the state program, which I can't gain access. And we don't have remote access to any of our computers. So in order to work from home, I have to copy things from my computer, bring it home to the, my home computer and bring it back and update my computer at work. So that makes it really difficult. And as far as by appointment only, I mean, I do have to accept filings for the zoning board, filings for the planning board, um, do uh, marriage intentions and those type of things, which could be done by appointment. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I have to be in the office at least a couple of days a week. There's just no getting around that. Yeah. Okay, Brian, can I ask you, is there computer equipment, say a laptop or something that we could we could provide for, for Lynn to do some of this work at home with, with that? I, I do have a laptop, but that doesn't get me into my programs. I have point software, which I can't access I can't bring that program home with me. Um, and the same thing with the state system. I cannot access any of that information on the state system remotely. Is that an issue on our end, Lynn? Or is no, that it's the state's requirement. It's a closed system. But it, it, it's it voter just... registration information that's on it and it's a closed system. There's a separate hardwired connection here for it. Yeah. But it seems if, if you're connected to the system, it shouldn't matter whether the system cares where you're at. It's all separate. That's it's a whole separate wiring yeah. system. It's through Verizon. It's not through our the way our other computers are connected. Oh, okay. Okay, Joyce? Um, my understanding is that the, the main safety concern is having more people in the building, that there is not... Uh, such a big safety concern for the people who work there being alone in their office with the doors closed. And I think that's essentially how pretty much everybody is working there right now, even Lynn in that big right. room. There's, there's almost never, I've never been there when there's been someone there with you. Um, and right, because Janet has moved into the other office. So that's right. Um, so, I'm a, it's my office alone right now. Right. So I don't have a concern with Lynn being alone in her office and handling appointments. But my understanding is, you know, people just kind of coming in because the option is there. Well, and we have so the door locked. Uh, people can't come in. We do not, unless it's like a delivery service, we're dropping off a package. We don't open the door for anybody. It's locked and they have to do business at the drop box if they want to. Yeah. So um, the outside well, door is, is unlocked. Okay. just so they can access the meeting notices and things like that. But the right. inner door is locked um, when our offices aren't open to the public. Oh, okay. Because I, I thought that was the, the, the like 12-ish hours. That right, we're, we're open the four hours that, but the at the end of those four hours, we right. lock that inner door. Right, so to me, the only difference is you could still be there. People would still have those 12-ish hours with which to make appointments. Right. right. Um, it's just that they would have to make an appointment uh, and the, that, that door is gonna be locked instead of open for those 12-ish right. hours. Correct. Um, so it, it seems to me like going to appointments takes care of the major health concern of having you know people coming in and out um, and it might be that, um, you know, people who are just accustomed to, to like dropping by might have to change their habits to call first. Exactly. Um, or uh, try and do more business over the phone or, uh, you know, if it's a matter of having a receipt in your hand that you want to feel, 
that they, they might have to like feel a little nervous for a day while you get things out of the box and mail them a, a receipt or call right. them and say, I hear I've got your receipt. It's on the way. Or, I mean, it, it seems like that's the major thing and that keeping you away from your computers, Lynn, doesn't make sense. Keeping the assessors away from their office, um, where I guess it's back there, it's really just Cynthia back there, you know, in a room by herself with the door closed. I don't see any point in, in forbidding that, in, you know, forbidding people to work there. Of course, work from home if you can, and I think many yeah. of our employees can, and, and that's one of the reasons why you can be there by yourself, <laughs> you know, one person in a room with the, with the door closed. Um, so I, I think I, I would support going to um, by appointments, appointments, but also that people know the times that we used to be open, those are great times for appointments. Right. You know? <laughs> So, so that there, there's at least a little consistency there. But we, we, we can, you know, I, I think it's only, you're only asking for four weeks and it's not the four busiest weeks of the year. And then we, we reassess, we can reassess at every select new meeting. So. Oh, Joy. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I would, I, would, I, I would make sure that any employee who was not comfortable coming in and could do their job from from home felt free to do that with no fear. I think of, that's already true. Yeah, I just want to yeah. throw that you know drive that point home. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I, I, you know I, I think we really do need to limit the number of people who who the number of reasons why people need need to be in the building even during an appointment. Um, well, in the past, in the summertime, I was doing all my appointments outside. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm quite willing to do a, appointments outside if it's snowing or whatever. You know, but <laughs> Appointments in general, why, you know, do you really, I mean, ask the question, is the, is the appointment really necessary or could they do it in the drop box? Could they, could they perform the function? People filing marriage intentions, filing uh, ZBA applications, those all, they could do it at the drop box, but most of them want a stamp to say that they did um, drop that off on that particular day um, because it starts their clock ticking. So there's, you know, there are some reasons why they really do need to have personal contact. Okay. Okay, so like I mentioned, there's, I think we've got two concerns. One is opening up offices to the public and then the second is is employees uh, working remotely and in the office to the degree that they that is necessary to do town business. Okay, uh, maybe first I'll make a motion that we we close the, the town offices to all uh, to the public and until our what January let's say uh, well uh, uh, until a future time. Uh, to the public, we close all town, all the town office building to the general public until a future date. Um, I would second that. Does that in, would that include people can make appointments to, as it's worded? Well, or or make appointments. Okay, I'll amend it to to make appointments. Close offices to all to to the public to come into the town office building and allow them to make uh, appointments to to uh, visit town employees, I, I guess, either visit or, or discuss with town employees. Well, I think discussion can be done by phone. Right. Okay, so I think yeah, we should just be really this close to the public, uh, except by appointment. So by appointment, okay. Are you second my motion? Yeah, I was second that. Okay, we'll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay, and the other part, do we need to discuss or any further uh, allowing employees to work remote? I mean, I, I, interp I, I assume that that's a, kind of a standing order right now, is that? Yeah. Okay. I think that's already in the policy, right? Or yeah. in the, uh, okay, yeah. so that will continue like we have now. Yeah. Okay. 
Any other discussion on, on the COVID-19? Uh, well then, okay, moving on to, uh, we need to talk about the uh, annual town meeting, the 2021 annual town meeting. What yeah, I wanted, I just wanted to have a discussion about that. Um, it would be the end of April right now. Um, and the planning that's gonna start happening with Capital Planning Finance Committee, um, which they all seem to have left, must be really exciting. Um, it's all gonna depend on, on, on working backwards from what the town meeting date is. Um, I, I know the schools would have liked to have started their budget planning now, but, but they haven't. Um, and then just kind of looking at what we see for projections in terms of vaccine rollout, and whether we want to have annual town meeting outside. And if we want to have it outside, it's probably nicer to have it outside in late May or June than it is opposed to late April. Um, so I just wanted to know if if the board had any thoughts on how we might want to proceed with that. Okay, Joyce? I have some thoughts. I think June. I don't know if it's early June or late June. We went kind of late last time, which is a little uh, tight. But I have no problem whatsoever with uh, right now saying, hey, our target date is going to be June just to optimize the chances of having a successful town meeting. Um, and uh, yeah, I know if we, uh, if we can have everything ready for, I don't know, the first or second week of June, I think that would be a, an excellent target. Uh, I think it gives us enough time to do anything else we need to do before July 1st. And, uh, it just makes sense. It went so nicely last year. We can, yeah. You know, I don't know that we would have to do it outside again, but we won't know that right. until probably May, right? If we're doing something in June, so that gives us a lot of options. And um, I think uh, if we kept it with Tuesdays, Tuesdays are June first, eighth, fifteenth, twenty second, twenty ninth, and I would think aiming for the eighth or the fifteenth might be a reasonable target. Well, I don't know if we have to decide tonight on an actual date, but- um, I, think just, I, would, I would just comment that, I, I, Joyce, I agree with you 100%. I, I do think it should be before the election. Oh yeah, town election is the eighth? I, I don't know. Um, the second so. Tuesday. The eighth, yeah, oh, I think so. The eighth. The eighth. So it can't be the 15th, 22nd, as, as, as you pointed out. That's my only. No, I mean, why, last year why do you need election. to have it before? You don't have to have it before, I don't think. We didn't last year. No. Yes. No. No, we, we had, had it after. After? Yeah. What, yeah. Day, what day did we have it? June 9th was the election, and June 23rd was the town meeting. Okay. Right. Sorry. Okay, so and I guess I agree with, with, with both Joyce and Jonathan that. Postponing it until till June is is fine with me. So, okay. Is that uh, is that okay, Brian? Is that what you need? Yeah. I, yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we need to set a, a final date right now, but a target date that kind of helps lay out the spring a little bit better. Yeah. Um, okay. I think Lou would like Google's... to have me the same as election day, right? <laughs> And, and you'll coordinate with finance as to when you want to start, I guess, the budget process and all of that. So, right. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Uh, old business is uh, first item discuss snow removal from town owned properties and sidewalks on Chestnut Plain and consider awarding contracts for snow, re snow clearing and treatment. Okay. Brian, you received some new information. Uh, from one of the contractors, I guess, and uh, based on a revised scope of work that you that you submitted. Right after the last meeting, Keith and I talked about trying to figure out ways that we could reduce the overall costs by amending or changing the scope of work. And the original scope of work was written that that snow clearing services would be provided essentially every three inches of snow. Didn't matter if it was a weekday, didn't matter if we were open or closed, it didn't matter if we were a weekend. Um, so if a contractor wanted to, they could go out, you know, five times on a Saturday 
if there's that much snow to clear and they could charge us that amount per time they go out and we'd spend a lot of money. Um, so we revised the scope to um, to ask for that level of service while we're open. Um, although we're not we're not really open anymore, but assuming we're going to be open. Um, as and then we asked for costs um, for what we called non operating hours. So that would be that would be Friday, Friday evening, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, with the request that things be cleared um, by Monday at 8 a.m. And then the same thing for if it's on week uh, weekday nights, that it be cleared by the next uh, the next morning by 8 a.m. So it's not we don't really need somebody to come out every three hours. We just need it to be cleared by a certain time. Whether they want to do it, um, you know, we just ask that they do it once. Um, so we we expect to see. We, there's not a ton of savings in the rate, but it's. It, overall, they'll be coming out less, so there'll be a, a, a lower total cost. So um, we received one bid for that. Um, that was JDR Builders again. Um, they were the ones who had submitted uh, for the first time. Um, and then we also have the bid um, for the sidewalks. We didn't have any change in the scope of work, so we didn't rebid that. Um, so that the one bid we have for that would be um, John Hannum. If, if the board wants to maintain the sidewalks in the winter um, and we want to use a contractor, that would be, I think that would be our best bet. Um, so we can talk about the bids. Uh, there are some, there are some cost savings alternatives that were included in the bid. Um, I think Keith has some ideas about that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, these may be our, 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 our two best options for at least this winter. So Brian, you did reach out to other contractors other than JD. I they sent it directly to I think five or six other companies that do um, landscaping companies that do snow removal or snow clearing, um, and I didn't get anything back. Uh, most people are looking to plow, and if they can't plow, then they don't really want to do it. Okay. They, they don't just want to send some guy with a shovel or a, a small snowblower to to do a small job, um, they make more money. The more driveways they can plow, the more money they make. Yeah. Uh, so if you can get a guy in a truck, you make a lot more money than the guy with a snowblower and a pickup truck. Okay. So it's, it's hard to find people to do it. Okay. So who, who would be responsible for monitoring this to make sure they're there when you, you want them to clear? Would that be a Keith's responsibility or would that be yours? Or? Um, I think, yeah, we'd ask to what if it's at the town offices and I get here at and I get here in the morning and it's not done, then yeah, so we're gonna know. Correct. We'll, we'll know. Okay. And yeah, both of these are in town, so it's not an inconvenience while traveling. Okay. Uh, I, I guess we need to decide do we first do we want to maintain the sidewalks in town in, in the winter? I guess they haven't been maintained at all, uh, even though the, I guess the, the condition is, is changed now, uh, they're, they're safer and easier to walk, I guess. And I, I don't know how many more people are using it. I, I occasionally see people there, but uh, I'm not a routine person going up and down the street, so. Uh, and and I, I guess the other maybe concern or comment I have is if we're doing this on, these are on town property and the, the use of it is, I guess, more, I guess I could say recreational because they're not connected to schools or businesses other than maybe the library. Uh, post office has their own, that's their own responsibility kind of. Uh, Maintaining these on, on, on town property, I, I guess, should we be maintaining or, or providing access to something on uh, Hurley Park for people to use Hurley Park in a winter? I mean, you're, we're, using, we're allowing them or providing access for sidewalks in the center of town, but 
I guess a Hurley Park, if, if you plow the driveway, people may want to use that for outside winter activities there. Very valid points. I mean, that's, we're doing it for limited limited groups center of, of town. Uh, I guess that, that just might, Thoughts come to mind. You know, if it were up to me, we, we would plow the driveway at Hurley on a regular basis, but we don't uh, because it is an option for people to cross country ski or you right. know, whatever. But Okay, Joyce? Well, <clears throat> I was looking at the material in our packet and I want to make sure I understand <clears throat> um, the um, there's a one page from JDR at the top. Um, the rates are what they originally bid from last time, correct? And then at the bottom of the page is this cost saving alternative that you talked about. Um, so we would be going for that bottom set of rates. Um, and because we're giving them more flexibility as to when to get things done, basically. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Brian, I mean, I guess. In terms of, in terms of how the cost savings are, are generated? Yeah. Um, it's just, I think it's just less, less area to do. I mean, one thing that, that we added in was the was the police department at the request of, of Jim. I think yeah. it's a really small area. So um yeah. you know they can do yeah. I know they're I think they can do the, the town hall and in, in the library and essentially one trip, but to make that extra trip, you know, not that it's far, but it takes time. Right. Um right. So I think the biggest cost savings is is excluding that. Right, but I mean, the rates go down to like half of what they are at the top of the page. Yep. Um, and I, I assume that's because um, either they're doing less area or the flexibility of the time. So what I'm I don't think that, is- I don't think the timing has changed. Pardon? I don't think the timing has changed. I think oh. it's the amount that they'd have to do because it also, it, it also modifies it by saying they'll just provide fire access to the town hall. Yeah, so um, I don't know what access they were providing uh, because a uh, 24 to 30 inch wide to each door, including the ramp. I mean, why do we need more access than that? So the town or other sidewalk contractor responsible for clearing the rest of the snow the day after it snows. The rest of the snow from where? If we've already got a path to both doors, where is there? Widen it out later on. Oh. Um, well, I think we're having so little is happening at the town hall. Um, and we've got the historical society in there. I don't think that that would put them out of business to have a 24 to 30 inch wide path. They have to go single file, but there's not, it's not like there's a lot of people going in now. So I feel like that's not, that's not that big. I, I think that's, that's enough snow clearing. Um, so the reduction in rate is because they're actually removing less snow because a smaller area is being done. And then it says that the library, municipal sidewalks at the street aren't being done until the day after it snows. So there's no reason to clear the sidewalk from the front entrance westerly to the new parking area. Okay, so the town or other sidewalk contractor would be responsible for clearing the rest of the snow the day after it snows. So at the library, basically, we're taking that off it just doesn't sound like they're removing anything from the library. Or only is it the, again a only 30... the north driveway or in the north north walkway? Okay. So the walkway that goes to the old parking lot. To the right, exactly. And then um okay. Well, but is anyone working in the library over the next couple months? Did I miss something? Yeah, I, I think with the so little use of the building. I, that... I believe I believe they are working in there. And right. I believe they're still. Uh, I I believe they're still working curbside, uh, curbside right. pickup. So. Right, but it, yeah, but we're. I don't think they're going to need overflow parking for curbside pickup. 
I mean, it, it's, it's this, what I guess what I'm trying to say is given the reduced use of town buildings, this seems like a reasonable amount of snow to remove that brought the rate down. And um, I understand this is different from plowing the parking lot. And that's in the next one, the one from uh, John Hammond. Or is that, that's, no, that's something that- Sidewalks, sidewalks. The sidewalks. The parking areas themselves, they get plowed by, oh. my name, please. Oh. The water department. Water department. Water department. Okay. That's what I was thinking. But I couldn't remember Wayne's name for a second. I was gonna say Bill Smith, but no. Okay. All right, so, so um, the water department does the lot. Um, and we get emergency access basically to the to the building. Um, and given the amount of use, those buildings aren't going to need a lot more than that. And center school basically is not in the picture at all because we don't really need to get in there. Okay, I'd like to uh, ask Keith. Uh, I know the last meeting he talked about why he didn't want to do it or he couldn't do it or the conditions that weren't. Uh, proper for him to do it. Have you looked any further at either hiring somebody or, or say buying equipment uh, to do either one of these sidewalks? At, at the moment, you know, I um, I did talk to, to Joe Zwinski um, and, you know, there's a possibility in the future they might be getting rid of some used equipment that might work for us. Um, but at the moment, it's a scenario where we don't have, uh, you know, a, a place to put it. You know, one of the one of the comments that had been made was when the water department merger building gets built, that that building would be able to house the snow, a, a piece of snow removing equipment that, when the storm is over, could go get the machine do the sidewalks and put it right back in and you're not having to move the, move the piece of equipment around. It has a place to stay right there. Um, as far as trying to buy anything now, piece of equipment, we don't have, um, it'll be more expensive than, than going out and paying for a contractor for this first year. Um, I think that's our best. If we're gonna, if you're gonna maintain the sidewalks, I I would say we go with the the bid that we have, and then we address things at the next budget cycle and look into if we want to purchase something and do it from that point on ourselves. Okay, and of course these contracts are only for for this one year, so we would revisit them again next uh, next fall. And you know, another thing, Fred, that I know was also a comment was to try to look into um, hiring someone. Um, it's It seems like it's difficult to find anybody that would be, we could have the flexibility to be a town, a part-time town employee to go and shovel the town office parking lots. Um, you got to remember that it's it's something that's pretty much a commitment 24-7. I mean, the way we restructured it, it doesn't have to be done on weekends as frequent, but whoever's doing that work has got to have flexibility. They can't work be working a regular 40-hour job somewhere else and leaving their job to come shovel the town office parking lot or town office sidewalk. So to try to hire somebody ourselves, um, we haven't, don't feel that that's feasible. Um, and it's certainly as we're seeing these other contractors who do this work on a regular basis, they don't even wanna give us a, a, it'd be one thing if they were giving us a bid that was high numbers, they're, they're not even, giving us the numbers because they just don't want to do it. Okay.
Okay, any uh, further discussion? So, Brian, I guess we've, we've got two proposals or bids here that we need to act on. Yeah, that would, yeah, that, that would be what, yep. Okay, uh, I guess if, if we, we approve the, the bid for John Hannum to do the street sidewalks, just the plain sidewalks, that's implying that uh, the town will maintain them during the winter. Uh, the, town will, the town will clear them during the winter. Clear, clear them. Right, is that right, Keith? Yeah, at this point in time, it will be just to to plow and remove the snow. Okay. You know, Fred, hold on. Let me. Is something to be said for if we're going to remove snow, thus probably creating ice, huh? whether we do need to treat those sidewalks? And if we're not gonna treat the sidewalks, perhaps we shouldn't be removing the snow at all because I know it's safer to walk through snow than it is to walk on ice. And I don't want a decision like we're making to be actually enhancing the risk of someone getting hurt. Are we increasing convenience that the snow's removed? Sure we are but are we increasing the risk that someone's going to slip and fall because ice is replacing snow? Yeah, I mean, we we clearly aren't going to have no intent on treating them. Um, putting the chemicals on them to treat them would only um, basically be the death of the rest of the maple trees in the center of town right. and we don't want to do that and trying to do something where you go and, and just put plain sand on it um, that could be done but again nobody has equipment to do that do, do that well, wasn't that the proposal that John submitted to do some treatment no, we were not treating them at all no. Okay. Yeah. It said. I think it says treatment on there, but it's a separate line item, and that would be something we just say we don't want. So it's not really a ten thousand dollar estimate. It's really a six thousand dollar estimate. Does that seem right? It, it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a tough situation. Jonathan's point about the the sidewalks becoming icy. I'm. I. It's it's a tough spot to be in because I think if. You're going to get people that are going to use the sidewalks anyways. They're going to pack the snow down. It's going to get icy. I, I, I kind of think it's going to get icy no matter what. And, I, and I'm and i not really sure how to get around that. Yeah, we're increasing our liability. <laughs> I guess you can I'm look at like, that. No, and Fred, never mind liability. Just common human decency. Yeah. yeah. I don't want my neighbors to get hurt. Right. But I'm not sure how we can assess the risk of not plowing versus, or not removing snow from the sidewalks versus removing snow from the sidewalks. I, I don't think we have a good way to assess that. I think to me, common sense says the opposite, that removing the snow is gonna make them safer than if they don't have snow on them. And it doesn't mean that they're never gonna have ice, but they'll just have a big, thicker, crunchier, uh, oddly shaped bit of ice if we leave snow on it. So I, I don't know, Joyce. I mean, it, it's it's all personal experience, obviously, at some level. I know that yeah. walking my yard over the snow is a lot safer than walking down my driveway three days after it's been plowed without any sand because the remnants of the snow has 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 frozen up. And you know, so I'll, but I'll, if he's, I'll, is he plowing it with something like he would plow your driveway with, or is this? It's a it's a professional plow company, right? But you know, I think well, then I think we can complain if they don't actually remove the snow. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, I I find it I think it'd be a really hard argument to make that it's going to be safer 
with snow all over the sidewalks, especially if people are walking on it and making footprints in it, and then those footprints become little ice puddles and so on. I, I, I don't know. That's it. It, it doesn't seem right to me. Well, I mean, I, you know, it's somewhat subjective because not, you know. Let me make sure we understand the, the sidewalks that go from, this would include the sidewalks from the Waitley Inn to the church as well on that side, but not on the other side. Correct. Just all of the new sidewalk that was done is what it would be, what this is. Okay, so we're, only, so we're only doing part of them, but there are sidewalks on the, on the uh, east side. I, I don't know the condition, but uh, they go down to the church as well, or that area of the church. That's not included in this contract, right? Correct. And I mean, we, we, we definitely know that we, the way I look at it, we have no choice with the um, shoveling of the, the side, you know, the sidewalk, I mean, the, the building lots. We have no choice. We have to do that. That's the way I see that. And then you guys have to make the decision if you want to do the sidewalks. And if we do do the sidewalks, you know, we've got to also discuss some um, funding, you know, where it's how we're going to pay for them. Well, that would apply to both of these contracts, right? Yes. So, well, let me ask Brian, where, where is funding coming from for these? Uh, the proposal is that is that for town buildings, we would have, I mean, we have some budget for, for snow removal for town buildings. Um, and we'll have to see how the winter plays out. In terms of, uh, and for these contracts, we're not entering lump, uh, lump sum contracts. These are just agreed upon rates. Um, in terms of the sidewalks, my recommendation would be that it, it, it be part of the winter roads budget. Um, and some days, you know, some years are, were, it, it all depends on the year in terms of how we are at the end of the year. Um, winter roads can be deficit spent uh, without further without further approval. So uh, if it's a really bad winter and um, the account needs to go into deficit, it can. Uh, but we really just, we don't really have a great idea as to, as to as to what it will take. And obviously that'll depend on how many winter storms we get. Okay. Are we ready to um, pass a motion? Sure. Do you want to make one, Fred, or shall I? Well, we, we've got the, the two the two bids. Uh, I, I I guess for this year, I okay. Make a motion. We approve John Hannum's uh, bid to maintain the sidewalks on Chestnut Plain Road, uh, and and. I guess it's the same motion I, I would like to, to add, uh, maintaining ac access to Hurley Field, Hurley Park for recreational use. The, the driveway to plow Hurley Field is part of that. I, I, I think uh, I like to see both. Well, wouldn't the, wouldn't, wouldn't, I mean, it's a separate, okay, it's a separate action. I, I guess it was come down to the town to do Hurley Field, yeah. Right. Yeah, we could just have, ask Wayne to, to, to do Hurley Field. Okay, oh, okay, let me, uh, let me withdraw my motion. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the, the contract for, for John Hannum to maintain the sidewalks along Chestnut Plain Road. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, we'll call a vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. Fred? Yes. Okay. Can I make a motion then that we also accept the bid for uh, the reduced uh, cost option on uh, JDR's uh, cost proposal for sidewalk snow clearing at the uh, town hall and at the library? 
and and uh, th that one that we have in front of us. Okay, I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Okay, we'll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. And and I guess I'd like to to add that I would like to our highway department to maintain access to Hurley Park, provide access to uh, on the driveway for use of Hurley Park for winter use. And to the parking lot. In the parking lot. I, I, would, I would, I don't know if that's a motion, needs to be a motion, but I, I think we should be doing that. Okay, Joyce, do you any comment on that? I'm agnostic on it. I don't really know what it is gonna add to Wayne's time and uh, I don't, I mean, it's not really paved. I don't know if that we're asking him a difficult thing. I well, assume you guys know better on it and I would probably abstain if we had to vote. Good. I don't feel like I know enough about the pros and cons there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would ask the police to find out, do they want the thing plowed so there's a place for kids to gather in the winter? I, I mean, I just, I don't know. I feel ill-informed and uh, you may know better than I because you live closer to that and John's a lot more involved in the rec commission, but I sort of feel like I don't, I don't have a strong opinion because I don't feel like I have enough information. I mean, a lot will depend on what you're asking or requiring for the capacity of the parking lot. Um, I don't feel in my mind that it needs to be um, wide open like it potentially could be you're not going to have 50 cars down there or I don't I don't anticipate that there would be 50 cars down there at any time um, I guess that could be a, a work in progress that um, should we see that there starts to be activity and there needs to be more plowing done as far as a bigger parking lot we could do that at a later time but to start off with I, I just don't feel that it's necessary to plow an area big enough for 50 cars, as long as cars, there's a room for them to park and turn around, I would think that would be suffice. I, I would agree with that, Keith. I, you know, I, okay. in the ideal world, I'd, I'd make it so you could plow it right up to the, to the, um, to the, to the, to the, to the shed. But the problem is that's not parking, that's grass against that fence. So just, you know, a handful of right. cars to, you know, to the barn on that on that mm -hmm. west side i think is fine i don't think we need I, I don't think you're going to see more than five cars down there at any given time 10 cars maybe yeah um but so just plow as far as the barn and call it a day okay okay and, and like you're saying keith though once you see how much use it is and you can determine whether you need to plow more or less or whatever so okay, okay. We'll leave that as, as the board asking you to do that. Okay. Uh, moving on, we talked, we already approved the social media policy, Joyce. So, okay. That, All right. I already did that. Uh, <coughs> new business to review, discuss, vote on license renewals for calendar year 21. Brian? I think you they are. gave us a list. Okay. So the, I mean, really the one change is Northampton Cooperative Auctions not looking at a common victuals yet because they, they've suspended uh, food service at the mm. cooperative auction. Okay. And yeah, the the, I'm sorry, the only other one is that, um, um, one call does it all. Um, that's the, the proposed location of, of one of the marijuana retailers that, uh, is also not renewing. Yeah, I don't have any, I mean, I, I know I know you keep us well informed of um, liquor violations. I don't know of any reasons why any of these others would be denied a license. So I would, in the absence of any other information, I would move that we, Approved licenses. 
that as listed here on the uh, on the list Brian gave us. Second. Okay, further discussion? Okay, roll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay, moving on, uh, discuss vote to accept conservation restriction for the Whateley Center Woods project. Brian? Yep, so um, I, I think we all know what, what this one is about. Um, I think I'm trying to see the screen again. I know there was somebody here from Kestrel earlier, but there is. Um, oh, still? Yeah. Oh, he, he turned on his camera. That's why he, you don't see the little bird picture anymore. I, Hold I on. Let me stop sharing. I feel badly. Now I can see people. <laughs> um, so they can add whatever I, I'm going to mess up, but this is for the Whitley Center Woods Project. It's the conservation restriction that's that will be held by the Conservation Commission in Whitley. They've already voted to approve it. Our town council has reviewed the conservation restriction. Um, yeah, at this point, it's, it's really a formality. The town's contributing $60,000 in CPA funds. It's some in-kind work, I think, right, Keith, with the some of the work at the with the culvert. Um, but um, this is the, the interest in the property that the town would hold, which would um, protect um, the conservation interests and in, in and have it open for public access. So we, we didn't do all the work we've done over the past several months to not <laughs> <laughs> approve this. So I'm going to make a motion that it be approved. I would second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. Like Excellent. Just want to say thank you, everyone, for your continued support. Oh, okay. well. hey, thank you. Hope you enjoyed our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> They're always interesting. Yeah. Take care. You're doing great work. Cool. Thanks. Okay, moving on. We already talked about the transfer station, Joyce. So, and uh, I know I missed all the really good discussions. Yes, I'll Here. watch it on FCAT. Don't don't bring any. Uh, metal objects, metal things to recycle at the transfer. We're not allowing that anymore. So no metal stuff. You mean not even like recycled cans? Well, no, other than cans <laughs> and recycled, but other metal. Um, the metal that you used to throw over the back. Right yeah. over the back. Right. No, not allowed anymore. No. All right. I, Who we blame for that again? I I don't know, but I've brought. I mean, I've been. I've brought entire gas grills down there. Yeah, I know. It's, it's still there. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but what's the, the, the collection, uh, Bucky Waste Collection Day, I guess, now. <laughs> mm, yeah, I guess. Well, there's also free cycle. Um, if you advertise that you have scrap, anything that's made of scrap metal, free cyclers will often come pick it up. <coughs> They're really, you know, scrap metal people. So there are other options, folks. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Uh, next item is to discuss vote to accept a proposed agreement to allow Frontier Energy to study performance of the HVAC system at the town hall for a 12 month period. And this Frontier Energy has nothing to do with our Frontier <laughs> Regional School. It's a company out in, I think, what, California. Uh, Brian, uh, yeah. Where did this come, where did this come about? How, how, how did we get this? Um, so they're doing a, I believe it's a, a nationwide study of um, the type of HVA system, which the technical name escapes me that we have installed at the town hall. Um, and they're trying to get um, really performance data on these systems as they're operating. Um, so they found, um, they found out about the, the town hall through a state database in terms of, um, I think it was through some of the energy credits that the energy rebates that we had from the state. Um, and they asked if they could monitor the system um, for a 12 month period. Um, the person had come out and he had looked at the town, he had looked at the town hall 
um, to see if it was eligible and it is eligible. So they just want to monitor the system for 12 months. Um, in exchange, they'll provide us a thousand dollar honorarium and um, we'll get a report in terms of the performance of the system. Um, it, so we're essentially granting them access to install some monitoring equipment um, to collect data on the, the performance of the system. Okay, uh, I, I guess I, I shared some comments I had with, with Brian, but thinking more of this, more about this, you know, the building is closed to anybody. So we're allowing this company to come in and install this equipment, which they haven't really told us exactly what they're going to install, where is it going to be at, how is it going to be attached, and to, I guess, periodically come in and, and inspect it, to make sure it's working properly. And I'm not sure what are we going to get out of this at the end, because we know that the performance of the equipment, it's only, what, two years old, the most, or three. We know the specs, we can share them the specs of the equipment and how it's supposed to perform. And when we applied for Green Communities Grant, we hired a uh, HVAC consultant to develop the proposal to look at the efficiency of our HVAC compared to what was there before, which wasn't much, but, but there was analysis done there and, and that was determined by that HVAC consultant that this was the best option for us. I don't know how you can, you know, you're, you're gonna monitor performance. I, I don't know what what you can change and and how how we would accommodate or, or make them changes to see if it works more efficiently because we're not using a building now. It, it's basically vacant. So there's no activity, no motion. And you also have the limited access of, of the, uh, historical society in the building. So I, I don't know how, how they would access that if they needed to. Uh, I, I just think there's a lot of uncertainty and, and I, I don't know what we would actually gain from this. I mean, I, I have no problem if they wanna study it and get data, but uh, I don't know if this is the time to open up the building to that purpose and it's not being used. It's a vacant building. Um, do we know how much uh, time they would need to come in and set up the monitors, Brian? Is there? Any, I I didn't. I don't remember seeing anything. Yeah. That it, it it seemed like you set up the monitors, you come back in a year, you pick them up. Like it, it was like it wasn't um, a lot of. But, but I, I'm was just trying to scroll through here. I don't see anything that. It's not that happened. specific. That yeah, specifies. I, I think it's I think what I'm seeing here is is it, it doesn't say in this agreement, but it says the installation would take two to four days. And then after 12 months of operation, they would they would come back and remove the system. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like it would be an onerous thing. There's a, there is something where it says they can um, they would like to make changes or repairs or modifications if it's deemed necessary. But it. I mean, it, it, it sounds like we can we can put whatever reasonable restrictions there are on it for uh, COVID health reasons. Um, to, I guess to the answer to Fred's question is, well, we get a thousand bucks and we get some data. Right. And it, it's I mean, a consultant can plan and try and figure out what's going to be best. But that's not the same thing as actually taking the data and finding out what we have there and it may be, provide a baseline it, it but it's it's like free data and to me i'm more excited about the free data than the thousand dollars and you're right we don't necessarily have a decision that we would make based on that data right now but it would be good to see if the performance is close to what our original designer expected it would be especially given it's only a couple of years old it should be pretty close um, and if it's not it may mean we need to look into something uh, that we otherwise wouldn't even know we have to look into. Um, or it could be that it's 10 years down the line, we want to assess the system again. At least we've got some baseline data for what it was doing this year. So I don't see any downside to having data. And the $1,000 is also nice. Uh, 
I'm with Joyce. Well, I, I guess I, I could go either way, but maybe we should wait till the building is being used whenever whenever that is because like i say now it's a vacant building and you can you can set the hey the, it might uh, be being used in the fall i mean i don't know exactly when they would come and install things it might not be tomorrow but it may it, it could be that in six months or nine months we're looking at a whole new world of the place being used if they if our country gets poop in a group and right. the, the vaccines out to people so I, I don't I don't think we would necessarily say the data is no good because the building's closed either. I actually think that we find we may find some information some interesting data to, to know what kind of energy is being used when the building is is relatively speaking empty. And then you compare it because let's assume for a second that that in August, September of 2021, we're, we're, we're heading back to normal and the building is, is being used a little bit more. Um, then, then you see that, that trend line to see what the, what the change was. I, I actually think it's, a, it, it's kind of a cool comparative analysis, Fred. Okay, well, like I say, I, I, I can go e either, either way. Uh, one thing I noticed though in there, Brian, is, is they they can remove the equipment within it's a 12-month study and they come in and alter and remove the equipment within i don't know if there's a 30-day window or something but there's no provision in there if the town doesn't want it any further for some reason can we, we opt out of them can we ask them come remove the equipment sooner yes. than the 12 months uh, under number 2b termination frontier they terminate this agreement at any time and then I, well, hold on. Um, oh, that was about them being able to terminate at any time. Uh, yeah. there's, got to, there's nothing in here about us being able to terminate it. Not that I could see. But, uh, unless I'd have to. Then we ask if they're willing, that, that we say, you know, we want a clause. If for whatever reason we want to terminate, we terminate. Yes. Right. I mean, we can always tell them to get their equipment out. We might have to return the money, but we can always tell them to get the equipment out. Yeah. All right. Let's just put the money in escrow so that we don't yeah. blow it on a big party. And, you know, a 250th party. Exactly. Yeah, right. Let's just call it a day. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually okay with, with it as is. I don't think it needs another clause. I um, agree. I agree with Joyce. So could I um, move that we uh, accept this agreement with Second. Frontier and get our data? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Keith, you have anything to say? You're, you're yeah. I mean, I, I, I just had a couple of comments. Or number one is how do they receive the the monitoring data? How is that transmitted to them? Yeah. Is do you know, Brian? Is that something through Wi-Fi? Or? Yeah, I believe it's. I I think it talks about about cellular. Um, so it's wireless. How, how much do you have any idea on how much um, power consumption that the uh, equipment they put in will, will? How much power will they consume? I don't know that. That's something we could find out. Um, I hope it would be less than a thousand. Yeah, right. I agree, but I just don't know what their you know how much power they would consume. But at the same point in time, with with the issues that we've had going on with the um, with the unit itself lately this may help us um, solve some of those issues do you think that's possible yeah I think I, I, I I'm hopeful that it will if there's deficiencies and things in the setup or how it's operating I think I think this provides a sort of a free 12 month look at how everything's performing mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. Is there any, to, to Keith's point about the cost of operation, is there any, any way we can ask for a, a sense from them of, of what increase in energy costs we will realize because of this study and ask them to you know, pick up that $100 tab or whatever it is? Because I, I can't imagine it's going to be a lot of money. I, I think that's kind of what the $1,000 is for. Yeah. 
You think? No. Or do you think they were just doing that because? I mean, they. I don't know what cost they'll be, but I don't think they'll be more than a thousand dollars. Lawrence oh, Berkeley wow. National Laboratory wants to freaking do an energy analysis on our building and give us money to do it. I'm not going to ask them for twenty bucks for electricity, and they're already giving us a thousand. I think. Um, I think this. We've probably spent more time discussing this than we really need to. The yeah, motion is on the I table just, and it's been seconded. I had the same comments, uh, same concerns, Keith, that you did about the communications and the electricity and and exactly what are they attaching or how are they attaching these monitors or sensors, whatever. What are they going to attach them to the walls or to the units or what? But uh, I guess uh, we'll see what happens with with that. Uh, we can sick Neil Abram on them, then he will make sure they don't do anything that we don't like. Okay. All right, let's move on. Okay, uh, we had two motions. Oh, okay, ready for a vote? Okay, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. Fred, yes? Okay, uh, I think town administrator updates to go two minutes. Well, five minutes. We'll give it till eight thirty, Brian. All right. Um, I don't, Jonathan may know more applications that were submitted, but the two that I know about for CPA were for the for the library lift project and also um, for the Veterans Memorial. Um, were there any other ones that you know about, Jonathan? I'm not aware of any others, although work prevented me from being at the meeting tonight. Gotcha. Yeah, about the uh, the Frontier Track. So I I got in I was in touch with Frontier and the response I got was that we wouldn't have a payment for the track until FY23. So there's no need okay. to, to pursue it then. Um, so I, I did not resubmit for that. Okay. Um, Keith can probably provide a better project, uh, project update for Williamsburg Road. Yes, I can let you know that um, Davenport has reached um, substantial completion. Um, we're Got a small punch list, nothing major that needs to happen from their standpoint. Um, as far as um, getting the road open, we need to have um, the guardrail installed. And before that can be done, um, we need transition plates that will basically adapt the bridge rails to guardrails. So once those plates have been um, delivered to us, which was anticipated to be um, mid-December. They're behind in the galvanizing of them because of COVID problems. So um, if things hold out the way they are weather-wise, we would be able to open it um, right away after the guard wheel get installed. If um, in the meantime, before that happens, we get two feet of snow, then maybe we'd have to wait until springtime. But um, at this point in time, I would anticipate that the road will be open before January. Um, I've let I've let the town of Williamsburg. I've up kept them updated in loop in the loop as to the timing on things like that, and so they're aware of it. Um, and it's looking good. Pretty who, much who all our other projects have, are wrapping up. The only thing that's still in limbo that hasn't been done, and I have, you know, Mark from from Waitley Woods didn't say anything tonight as far as, you know, he was, they were going to begin to order and get their materials in for us to do the work at the, for that culvert. Um, other than that, everything else has been completed. Okay, um, Keith, I know. Williamsburg Road Bridges, who determines whether it's to, to completed to open traffic? Do you do that or does the state have to come out since it's a state funded? Um, yeah, I mean, Mass DOT, I've talked to the um, bridge engineering department and um, the, 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 the two bridges that were just done, the next bridge above it needs to be rated to, um, to get an exact rating that we can open the road for and because the road has been closed and Boston has not seen it as a priority they haven't 
allocated the, the time to have it rated. Um, I keep asking them and Brian has done the same thing by sending a letter asking them to rate it. Um, at some point in time they will, but in the meantime, um, it will be posted at um, three ton, which is a, a very conservative rating and mass DOT is okay with that. So um, it, that's where it's gonna be for right now. Um, once it get that bridge gets rated, then the posting will probably increase. I just don't know how much. Okay, so you determine when it's open. Yes, I mean, they, they, Mass DLT have got to, you know, we've got to, we, he, they and I will communicate once the guardrail is, is in the, the bridge department, the, they were in inspecting them um, two days ago. They had a crew in there inspecting them. So they're on top of it. Okay. Brian, anything else? Yep. Um, so um, updates on previous permitted marijuana establishments. Um, I checked in with the folks who, who we have active host community agreements with to find out what their timelines were and if they're still pursuing their projects. Um, so I heard back from Toro Verde, that's the, the establishment that wants to go into the Sugarloaf shops. They're hoping that, that we'll see activity on the site um, likely in January. Their targeted date opening is for operations would be August of 2021. Um, once they, there's a whole process they need to get through with the, with the CCC and inspections and once they complete their renovations. Um, so that's the projection there. Um, and the other, the other one that's um, larger would be NAP advisors that would be at full bloom at the greenhouses on, on the large greenhouses on state road. Um, they give me less, less uh, definitive timeline, but they said that they're working on the facility renovation and the, the facility renovation design, um, and they're trying to develop their timeline for that. So both those projects are still active. Um, we had, we met with, with uh, Karen last time from Diamond Shine. That project is, is where, <clears throat> where it is um, that we last spoke with, uh, last spoke with her. Um, the folks who had, um, the folks who have interest in the LaSalle property, they held their community outreach meeting this past Monday, virtual community outreach meeting. Um, unfortunately they got Zoom bombed. Um, they got Zoom bombed twice. I, I, after the third time that they came back, they finished their meeting, um, without any further interruptions, but I did notice that there were some people on the original at the start of the meeting who did not who we did not see back on after the let's say the third time I think it was three times right Fred yeah um, yeah I don't know if that's going to be an issue um, I don't I'm not really sure how to proceed with that maybe we ask them to check with the CCC to see what the CCC would want them to do because that's really a CCC requirement that they need to meet. Um, and indirectly, we could we could also affect what they do in terms of your willingness to sign the HCA. Um, Joyce, we did receive a, a draft yeah. HCA today. Um, yeah. maybe I haven't looked at it, but I got it in my in-bass tip. Yeah, maybe that's something we could work on it over the next week or two. Um, one reminder to them is that whenever they do track changes and comments, they should probably get rid of those before they send them to people they want to negotiate with. Um, oh, but we don't need to tell them that. I don't think. <laughs> um, that's that. Um, state budget came out of conference committee, um, so it's been adopted by the legislature. Governor has until Monday the fourteenth to sign a veto of the budget. Um, so, hey, we're only. What five months in, six months in? Um, hopefully that will get passed. The the numbers are favorable. They've been favorable all along for us. Um, so they've kept their promise about keeping education chapter seventy funding and uh, unrestricted general government aid funding uh, level from last year. And then uh, in terms of buildings and ventilation, um, so we've had the I wave systems were installed on the town hall mini splits um, to help with the uh, 
air ventilation purification there. And I've asked, I've reminded the other department heads of the other buildings of fire station, highway, and police that you really, it's really time to either do something or when the money's not going to be available uh, to get proposals for consideration because absent any action from the federal, uh, from the federal government, that money's going to expire December 30th or we can't, we can't use it after December 30th. So that's about it. Okay, that just curious. How many units did you retrofit at the town hall? Um, as many as are there. Sixteen. Um, I'd have to go back and look. They were one short because they didn't include the um, historical society, but they're coming back to do that. Oh, okay, so it was most of the units or all the units. Okay, it should have been all the units. Yeah. Okay, the other item we talk about is our, our next meeting date. Uh, typically, it would be the we meet, meet, we meet what the second and last Wednesday of the month. The last yep. would be the, the 30th of December. Do we want to do it then or do we want to do it the 23rd week before? Do we need one? Well, we get the host community agreement for one thing, right? Yeah, presumably, yeah. Right. Yeah, but that's not time sensitive. Well, it, it is as far as ZBA and planning meeting to talk about it, which would, I think ZBA is meeting on January 7th. So we wouldn't meet before then. I have no objection to um, either the 23rd or the 30th. Um, so I have a slight preference for the 30th, but that's our usual date. Okay. Brian, does it matter to you? Nope, I'll keep it short. <laughs> Very. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll set it to the 30th, December 30th uh, at 6 p.m. Zoom meeting. Okay. Oh, so one of the other items that, that I pushed off was to have a conversation with FCAP. Um, is that something we sh I should try to schedule for the 30th? Sure. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. Any other business we need to talk about? I can keep adding stuff, Jonathan, if you want. <laughs> I could keep adding stuff if you want to the oh, meeting. The holiday season and all. Okay. Okay. All right. So then uh, in January, we're, uh, I'll assume, back on our regular first or second and last okay. Wednesdays. Unless we change it at our next meeting, we're back on it in December too, so we're good. Yeah, right. Thir thirteenth and twenty seventh. Right. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call vote. Jonathan. Yep. Joyce. Yep. Brent. Yes. Okay, everybody. Have a merry Christmas. Bye. Thank you. After that, stay safe and healthy and